Yeah, I'll tell you, we're going to talk about another way to collect data, and that would be doing a sample survey. So, of course, a survey is something you're probably familiar with. You've probably filled out a survey uh, at least a few times. And it's when you ask questions of a small group, and the point of doing that is try, trying to learn something about an entire population. And so in order to conduct a survey, uh, you have to do it the appropriate way. So the first step in conducting a survey would be to select a sample from the population. And I'm going to hide some of this stuff so it's not too visually overwhelming. So it's not always possible. In fact, it's almost never possible to get information from an entire population that you're interested in. And so what we need to do is we need to take a sample, and that's a smaller group of people who are representative of the population. And so uh, the book uses a really good uh, analogy of cooking soup. And so in order to taste your, in order to figure out if your soup tastes good, you don't need to eat the whole pot of soup. Um, you could take a, a spoonful of soup, and you can tell if it tastes good just from that spoonful. And so that would be like taking a sample, the spoonful of soup from a population, which would be the whole pot of soup. And so this is a really important step here, and that is to randomize. Uh, whenever we take a sample for a survey, we need to make sure that we do so randomly. And that'll protect against any influence uh, that exists within our population. It really helps us to avoid bias, which we'll talk about in a minute or two. And so let's say you've tasted that soup and you had to add some salt because it needed a little more flavor. Um, again, I'm, I'm using this example from the book. You wouldn't want to take a sip off the top because it'll be too salty. You wouldn't want to take a sip off the bottom because it wouldn't be salty enough. And so what you do is you mix up that soup, and so uh, the salt is distributed, and then you can, uh, again, get a good idea about your entire pot. And what's really important here is that um, it doesn't matter how big our population is. The thing that matters is our sample size. Okay, so if you were trying to feed uh, your family of four or five, and you were making soup, um, or if you are trying to feed a whole banquet of people, it doesn't matter the size of the pot of soup or the amount of soup. You can still take a spoonful and know if the soup tastes good. So you don't need to drink out of some giant soup spoon uh, just because you have a bigger pot or you're making a bigger batch of soup. You can still taste uh, how good the soup is from a regular spoonful. So I hope I didn't go too deep on that uh, spoon analogy. Um, in the rare occasion that you can sample everyone, or serve, I shouldn't say sample, survey everyone uh, from the population you're interested in, then you would call that a census. And the United States tries to do a census, but it's not really a true census because it is impossible to survey everybody in this country. And so, uh, it's a little symbols that we're going to use, some of them you recognize. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit. A population is associated with parameters. They're both P words. So that should make a little bit of sense. And statistics are associated with samples. And they're both S words. And the thing that we use to represent statistics are mostly uh, regular letters. And the thing we use to set, uh, represent parameters about the population are typically Greek letters. And so you can see for means, we have X bar and the Greek letter mu, which we've seen. Standard deviation uh, for a sample is S. For a population is sigma. Correlation is R for a sample, which is what we've been talking about. And if we were to have an entire population, we would call it rho. It looks like a P, um, but it's the Greek letter rho. Uh, for a regression coefficient, it's B, that uh, slope of the linear regression line. If we had a population, we would use Greek letter beta. And when we have something about a sample, a proportion, we use P hat, which is similar to when we're talking about regression, Y hat. 
And uh, in this case, the parameter is still just a regular letter, but we call it regular P. Okay, so these are some things that we have seen and some things that we're definitely going to see a lot of in the future. And it has to do with the difference between a population and a sample. So again, population parameter, sample statistic. So the way that we uh, sample in order to take a survey is incredibly important. And there are many sampling methods we'll talk about, uh, not the least of, of which is a simple random sample. This is like the uh, foundation of sampling. And so we want to define, a, in order to take a simple random sample, we want to define a sample frame. Uh, and that is just the group of individuals that's representative of our population that we are going to collect data from, or we're going to collect our sample from. Uh, we'll assign a number to each individual in that sample frame, and then uh, using uh, some sort of technology or random digits table, we'll randomly generate numbers, and those will be the members from the sampling frame that we will actually survey. And so there's an example in the book. There are 80 students in a class. We want to select five. Let's conduct, let's get a simple random sample of five students, and they gave us some random digits. And so, just like we would do in a simulation, we can number these students 0 to 79, 80 different numbers, and then select the first five numbers that show up. So 5, 16, 62, 93 wouldn't count because we haven't labeled anybody 93. 5 would not count because we've already selected 5. So we take 77 and 48. And so that gives us a five people. So the individuals or the students with those numbers we would select and survey and that would give us a simple random sample of five people. A stratified sample is sort of when a population takes on specific characteristics and break them up into homogeneous groups. So groups that share a specific characteristic. The best example is high school students. We can break you up into four groups, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. You all share in the senior class a, uh, a specific characteristic, and that is that you're a senior. And so we call those groups strata. And then within each of those stratum, we can take a simple random sample as I just described. And that way what we can do is avoid any effect that uh, those, those characteristics would have on our sample. So in our uh, example of students, we're trying to find out what freshmen think of the food. And food service believe that men and women have different opinions. And so uh, we could adjust our sampling by breaking them up into... Uh, two strata, men and women, and then take a simple random sample from each stratum. So a simple random sample of men, a simple random sample of women. And that way the gender would not have an effect on our results. Something that's very similar to stratified sampling is cluster sampling, and it's very important that you know the difference. Uh, when we break our population into clusters, those clusters don't have one characteristic uh, that they have in common. What they are is a small groups that are representative of the population. And so if we want a cluster sample, we can break the population into clusters, and then we can randomly select clusters, and then within those clusters we would take a census, meaning we would sample everybody in that cluster. So uh, to compare it to school, we could um, break the school into clusters by homeroom, and then we could randomly select homerooms and then give a survey to everybody in those randomly selected homerooms. So we have our uh, food service example again. Um, and it looks like we have freshmen in 10 dorms. This is uh, in college. And so we want a cluster because it's hard to track down all the people that we 
selected. So if they have 10 dorms, we could uh, call the 10 dorms clusters. And then we can randomly select uh, a few of the dorms. They said one or two. And then we can try and get in touch with everybody in those one or two dorms. Uh, Multi-state sampling is uh, just what it sounds like. It's a combination of a few sampling methods, most specifically stratified and cluster sampling, since within both of those, you're going to be performing a simple random sample of some sort. And the last sampling method is systematic sampling. So again, we could take uh, a sampling frame, assign everybody in that sampling frame a number. We'd randomly generate a number to start with, and that would represent the individual uh, that we would uh, survey first. And then we would select, I wrote, every nth individual after that. So maybe we select every 10th person numbered after that, or every 5th person, or every 20th person. And that's called a systematic sample. So there's four questions here. This is from page 289, the just checking. And so if you're having a hard time reading this on your phone or your computer at home, then you could just go to page 289 and find those just checking problems. And what I'd like you to do is try to answer those four problems. And we can talk about them and go over the answers in class together.